when you uh, think of the Buddha, you think of the young man who was born in Kapilavastu, who practiced um, many years in the forest, and who went around India to give the teaching. But that is uh, only a portion of the Buddha. Because uh, the moment when the Buddha began to uh, build a Sangha, he began to transfer himself to the Sangha. And many disciples, uh, monastic like uh, lay, they continue the Buddha. And you have to see the Buddha in the Sangha. You have to be, to be able to see the Buddha in the Dharma. And if you have not seen the Dharma and the Sangha, you have not seen the Buddha. And the Dharma is available in the here and the now. The Sangha is also available in the here and the now. You do not have to go to India in order to see the Buddha. If we uh, believe that Buddha is a God, they can bestow on us um, the things we want, uh, then, and then that is not the Buddha. The Buddha is a human being who has uh, a deep capacity of understanding and of loving. And having Mah uh, Maha Karuna, uh, great uh, compassion, Maha Maitri, um, great um, love, uh, Mahaprasna, great uh, understanding, he can perform miracles. Uh, understanding people is a miracle. And it is described that the Buddha is one who understands the world well. Lokavidu, it means uh, understanding the world. And um, because he understands the world deeply, and that is why he can offer the kind of teaching that can help heal uh, the world. And um, uh, the miracle of understanding and the miracle of uh, teaching are very important miracles that the Buddha can perform. Uh, when you give a teaching that can transform people who, who hear you, that is a miracle. The Buddha described it as the greatest miracles of all miracles. And there are, there are disciples of the Buddha who were capable of doing that during the time of the Buddha. They could already continue the Buddha in the time of the Buddha. And in our time, there are those of us who can do the same by their practice, by their teaching. Uh, they can uh, heal people, they can help people liberate uh, themselves from their suffering. So the miracle continues. Karma in Buddhism is action. Action in, in the form of, a, of the thinking. Thinking is acting. Uh, speaking is acting. And doing things is acting. And every act has a result. That is karma. And uh, no, no act, uh, nothing can be lost. It continues always. The chain uh, of action continues. And if you perform positive karma, uh, it will co continue very well. It will help uh, you and help other people. So karma should be understood uh, in the positive way also. Uh, to, uh, mm, to, uh, to produce a thought of uh, loving kindness, compassion, and understanding is a wonderful karma that can bring happiness to so many people. To say something that inspires confidence and remove, uh, remove uh, doubt and suffering, that is a wonderful karma. And, and, and to do something to help people uh, suffer less, uh, that's a wonderful karma. And that karma is to be encouraged. And the Buddha always uh, uh, perform, um, well, uh, produced these karmas during his whole life. So karma should not be understood as something, only as something um, negative. And, and the, uh, why the negative karma should not be uh, continued, should not continue the cycle of samsara. Uh, the good karma should be encouraged to be reborn and reborn. Because if you, if, if you, if you practice uh, loving-kindness 
uh, you produce loving kindness in your child, in your student. And if he continues, if she continues, she will practice loving kindness and will transmit to, to, to her uh, his uh, children. And that is why uh, we encourage the continuation, the rebirth of uh, the good things. Uh, we, don't, we, 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 we only want to discourage the continuation of the, and the rebirth of bad karma. But good karmas, we go come. The Buddha said his uh, teaching, the Dharma, um, uh, is to come and to see by yourself. You can touch uh, the Dharma directly. And he said that his Dharma um, uh, transcends time. It does not have to, uh, to be caught uh, in time. Akalika means uh, uh, free uh, of time. Uh, the moment when you begin to uh, apply the Buddha, uh, to apply the teaching of the Buddha in your life, you can see already uh, the result. And you don't need uh, someone who represents the Buddha or represents the Dharma because the Buddha, you can get in touch directly, the Dharma also. The Dharma um, does not need to be spoken or to be written down. The Dharma can be recognized when someone uh, walks with uh, freedom, with uh, solidity, with joy. When someone sits uh, with peace and uh, compassion. When someone uh, speaks with um, tolerance, with uh, loving kindness. We call it the living Dharma. The li living Dharma is available and it can be recognized by all of us. And if the living Dharma is there, you know that the living Buddha is also there. Because um, what makes a Buddha is the living Dharma. Uh, Shakyamuni embodies the living Dharma. And his disciples, many of them are capable to continue him uh, to embody uh, the living Dharma. In Buddhism, we speak of Nirvana, which is the cessation of all suffering. Nirvana First of all, it means uh, the cessation, the extinction of, uh, of all suffering. But uh, our suffering um, uh, comes from our wrong perceptions, avidya, uh, misunderstanding. And uh, that is why uh, the practice of meditation, the practice of looking deeply, has the purpose of removing wrong perceptions from us. If we are able to remove our wrong perceptions, uh, we will be able to be free from the afflictions and the sufferings that always arise from wrong perceptions. You have wrong perception on yourself and on the other, and the other has wrong perception on themselves and on you, and that is the cause of fear, of violence, of hatred. And that is why uh, trying to remove wrong perceptions is uh, is, uh, is the only way uh, to peace. And, and that is why nirvana is, first of all, the removal of wrong perceptions. And when you remove wrong perceptions, you remove the suffering. And uh, to meditate uh, deeply, you find out that uh, even ideas like uh, being and non-being, uh, birth and death, uh, coming and going, uh, are wrong ideas. Uh, if you can uh, touch reality in depth, you realize that uh, uh, such, suchness means the ultimate reality is free from, from birth, from dying, from coming, from going, uh, from being, from non-being. Uh, that is why uh, nirvana is first of all the removal of uh, notions of ideas that serve the base of uh, misunderstanding and suffering. If you are afraid of death, of uh, nothingness, of non-being, because you have wrong perceptions on, uh, on death and on uh, non-being. Uh, the French uh, scientist uh, Lavoisier said, uh, there is no birth, there is no death. Uh, he just observed uh, uh, reality around him and come to the conclusion that rien ne se crée, rien ne se perd. When you look at uh, a cloud, 
uh, you think that the cloud as a being. And later on, when the cloud becomes the rain, you don't see the cloud anymore, and you say the cloud the, is not there. And you, de- you describe the cloud as non-being. But uh, if you look deeply, you can see the cloud in the rain. Uh, and that is why uh, it's impossible for a cloud to die. A cloud can become uh, rain or snow or ice, but a cloud cannot become nothing. And that is why the notion of death cannot be applied to reality. There is a a transformation. There is a continuation. But you cannot say that there is death. Because in your mind, to die means from something, you suddenly become nothing. Uh, From someone, you suddenly become no one. And so the notion of death cannot apply to reality, whether to a cloud or to a human being. Uh, the Buddha did not die. The Buddha only continued uh, by his Sangha, by his Dharma. And you can touch the Buddha in the here and the now. And that is why ideas like uh, uh, being born, uh, dying, coming and going, uh, being and non-being, uh, should be removed right, by the practice of looking deeply. And when you can remove these notions, uh, you are free and you have non-fear. And non-fear is the true foundation of great happiness. As far as fear is there in your heart, happiness cannot be perfect. And that is why nirvana is not something that you get in the future. Nirvana is the capacity of removing wrong notions, wrong perceptions, which is the practice of freedom. Nirvana can be translated as freedom, freedom from views. And in Buddhism, uh, all views are wrong views. Uh, when, you, when, when you get in touch with uh, reality, uh, you no longer have views. You have uh, wisdom. You have a direct encounter with reality. And that is no longer called views. This morning I, um, I did walking meditation with the children. And although they did not um, seem to, to practice, uh, they did not look uh, serious in the walking meditation, but they really enjoyed it. Uh, we were able to create the pure land during the walking meditation. Everybody enjoyed it. We go free enough in order to touch the beauties of, uh, of the environment and in us. And uh, the pure land is not something in the distant future. The, dist- the pure land can be touched in the here and the now. And the teaching of the Buddha can even be offered to the children. They, uh, more than 25 years of teaching in the West, I realized that children can understand very deeply the teaching of the Buddha like impermanence, uh, non-self, and uh, interbeing. Uh, when I talk to the children about a cloud can never die, they understand. Uh, they can see that the cloud can only be transformed into the rain or into the snow. And when you hold your uh, glass and you drink your tea, uh, you can see that you are drinking clouds. And if, if you look into a river, you see nothing but cloud. And if you eat your ice cream in mindfulness, in wisdom, you see that you are eating cloud also. So these things are perfectly understandable to children. And uh, I think uh, uh, Buddhism, according to our uh, studies and practice, can go perfectly with the modern science. 
and uh, scientists and the Buddhist uh, practitioners can collaborate in order to dig uh, deeper into the nature of reality. And hopefully by that collaboration we can help remove uh, more misunderstanding, more wrong perceptions in order to give uh, peace and uh, brotherhood uh, uh, another chance. There's the view of eternalism. Eternalism, that means uh, you have a soul that is eter eternal and after you die that soul uh, remains intact and go to another body and continue like that, that is uh, eternalism. And then the, the, the other extreme is that uh, after you die, well, there's nothing left. Nihilism. Uh, and uh, uh, Nirvana is the extinction of these two, these two views, uh, nihilism and, um, and uh, eternalism. And uh, even in, uh, in, in, in the life of a person, in the lifetime of a person, uh, when you grow uh, 10 years old, uh, you are no longer the same um, with uh, you when you were five. So you are five and you are ten. You are neither the same nor a different person. So the notion of same and difference should be trans transcended also. So if you don't see that kind of light, you don't really understand the rebirth in Buddhism. You may, you may, you may get caught in the view of etern eternalism. And you are not different from, uh, from uh, traditions who who, who, who hold a view that uh, there is an immortal soul. In the light of uh, the teaching, everything is impermanent. Nothing in the five skandhas can remain the same, exactly the same, in two consecutive moments. But nothing is lost. Uh, and, and, and creation in Buddhism means uh, manifestation. And from nothing, you cannot become something. So creation, if you look deeply, it is uh, really a continuation of manifestation. If you don't manifest in this way, and then you manifest in that way, like the cloud and the snow. So if you get that, you are no longer afraid. And that is uh, your, your, your supernatural power. Already, if you have non-fear, and then, and then you are quite different from, from other people because they are subjected to fear, fear of uh, dying, fear of uh, being nothing. But with non-fear in you, with that uh, deep uh, uh, wisdom in you, uh, you become supernatural. <laughs> you are no longer a mortal, but you, are not a, you don't need to be a god because uh, uh, a god is supposed not to be a human being. So to say that uh, uh, the Buddha uh, has a supernatural power, that is true also. But he does not need to be a god in order to have that. He needs only to have freedom. Freedom from wrong views and freedom from fear. It's like uh, birth and death are like waves. And you are riding on the waves of birth and death and you go uh, without fear. It's a wonderful. That is super, uh, supernatural power. And the Buddha did not encourage his, his, his uh, disciples to perform miracles. He said the greatest miracle is the miracle of uh, uh, teaching and transforming uh, people. And that, uh, that is a miracle that he, he do every day. Uh, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist meditation is uh, the practice of looking deeply into the nature of reality. Because if uh, we don't have enough uh, concentration, mindfulness, we cannot look deeply. We, we can be deceived by what we see and by what we hear. It's like science. Science is, uh, is also an attempt to look uh, more deeply. You look uh, at the sky and you see a star. You believe very strongly the star, that the star is uh, there. It, but it, it, it may be that the star has already disappeared 1,000 uh, years of light uh, ago. 
and that is why you you can be deceived by what you see and what you hear. And science help us uh, to be more careful. Uh, and Buddhism does the same. Uh, if uh, you look deeply, uh, and then you can uh, be free from uh, wrong perceptions, from illusions, like the illusion that uh, life is uh, permanent. Uh, there is a permanent soul inhabiting each uh, living being, these kind of things. The Buddha did have a teachers. He, he followed uh, a number of teachers and he practiced with uh, communities. And he had uh, made uh, some progress in his uh, path of uh, looking deeply. But he realized finally that this kind of uh, realization uh, um, uh, was not enough for, for his uh, liberation, and that is why he had to continue by himself. And uh, uh, sitting at the foot of the body tree, he was able to make a breakthrough and discover the nature of uh, uh, interdependence, the nature of uh, interbeing. Uh, he discovered the way of uh, looking deeply and he could uh, transcend his idea of birth and death, coming and going, uh, be being and non-being, and he was uh, completely um, liberated from suffering. Uh, the happiness, uh, the salvation of Buddha was uh, possible thanks to, to Mahaprasna, great understanding. And uh, when you got great understanding, you are no longer f you are no longer afraid of being born, of dying. And that is why you want to uh, share uh, uh, your insight and your practice with other people. The Buddha returned with hundreds of monks to his friend, King Bimbisara. Bimbisara immediately offered him land to build a monastery. Buddha gave one of his most famous sermons on this hill. In the Lotus Sutra, the Sermon on the Perfection of Wisdom, he explained how every human being could become a Buddha. Any one of us has the capacity of uh, becoming a Buddha. And that is what the Buddha uh, said. Whether we are man or woman, black or white, or brown or red, we can all become uh, fully enlightened. And uh, that is why yeah, all of us can continue the Buddha. So if you get that, you are no longer afraid. And that is uh, your, your, your supernatural power already. If you have non-fear, and then you are quite different from, from other people because they are subjected to fear, fear of uh, dying, fear of uh, being nothing. But with non-fear in you, with that uh, deep uh, uh, wisdom in you, uh, you become supernatural. <laughs> you are no longer a mortal. So to say that uh, uh, the Buddha he has a supernatural power, that is true also. But he does not need to be a god in order to have that. He needs only to have freedom. Freedom from wrong views and freedom from fear. The Buddha is a human being who has a deep capacity of understanding and of loving. And having great uh, compassion, great um, love, great understanding, he can perform miracles. 
He said the greatest miracle is the miracle of uh, uh, teaching and transforming uh, people. And that, uh, that is a miracle that he, he do every day. <laughs>